I'm going to wrestle into this real, real close to my heart, personally. Um, I guess I'm going to open up with a little bit of a story. Uh, when I was a teenager, um, I dealt with a lot of panic attacks and depression and stuff like that. And uh, it was very difficult for me. And uh, the church I was in at the time, they didn't really care. And there was really no one who was there for me at that time. And I'm not trying to say, you know, what was me? I, I have a point to this. I'm not just whining, okay? Um, and, uh, well, I mean, obviously as a teenager, you're confused enough, but I just, I had no idea what was going on and I didn't know how to fix it either. And, um, go ahead and go to that first point there, buddy. So, eventually I came to the point of saying, you know, feelings don't decide what I do. Just because I feel something doesn't mean that that's how I act, right? Sometimes you don't feel like forgiving somebody, but you do anyways. Sometimes you feel like something is right or wrong, but then God says no. See, I mean, thing, how we feel doesn't dictate what actually is. And a lot of times, especially with things like depression and anxiety, your feelings aren't even, for lack of a better word, real anyways. You know, you feel things that aren't, they aren't true, and you think things that aren't true, and, but eventually I came to this, this, this idea that just because I feel something doesn't mean I have to decide to do that thing, you know, and, and I fought and fought, and I remember one point probably was the low, the low of the whole experience was I actually couldn't leave one room of my tiny uh, single white house. So, I mean, that's, that's not great. <laughs> um, and the room was, you know how mobile, mobile homes are, it's probably like, I don't know, six by six, it's like a cell in there, I swear. And what were they thinking when they made those, huh? Uh, but anyways, that was kind of the low of my, low of my experience there. And uh, you know, it's still a struggle for me today. It's not like I, I turned the corner, no, the struggle's still there. Uh, most people don't know, but there's 100% of the time that I still struggle with depression and anxiety. It's not like there's some times that are worse than others. It's 100% of the time. It's with me all the time. Um, I have never uh, medicated for it. Um, I don't necessarily say that you shouldn't. I'm just saying I've never taken medication for it. Um, but now that I'm an adult, I'm seeing kind of the opposite. Whereas before, people didn't understand depression and anxiety. Now it kind of seems like it's the opposite. People... People with depression and anxiety use their, dis their, their disability, their mental problem as a crutch. And they say, well, I have depression, so that gives me the right to not get out of my house. That gives me the right to not work. That gives me the right to sit and whine all day. That gives me the right to sit on my butt because I feel bad. And it's kind of been very confusing for me because I went from this insecure teenager that had no idea what I was going through to having to you know, buckle up and deal with it, to now it's gone to the other extreme, and it's like, it's, it's almost like it's the cool thing to have depression and anxiety. Yeah. Hey, you don't have to deal with it, just kind of let it be, you know, like that, like that old song, let it be, <laughs> whatever. Um, gotcha. And uh, so that takes me to the po second point there on, on, the, on the screen there. I'm depressed, so I'm not going to try. It's okay. Just accept it the way it is. But, you know, that is woefully, woefully immature. I mean, this obviously is more close and dear to me than other people, but no, no. You know how many times the Bible talks about not worrying about tomorrow, not, not just staying in that place, about the joy of the Lord, about, you know, all these different things. God didn't make us to just accept depression, anxiety, and all those other things. And you'll notice that a lot of the things I'm going to talk about tonight go beyond just depression. If you've had any mental disorder of any kind, I think you'll really find it relatable. We'll be in Joshua chapter 1. And uh, before, we, before we read there, I want, to re I want to kind of say this idea, go to the next point there on the slide, Benny. Uh, depression isn't a choice, but giving up is. 
for those of you, I, I hear this very frequently, I have depression because I have a chemical imbalance in my head, fine. Okay, I understand. Like I say, I, I deal with it every second of every single day. I get it, I really do. But giving up is not a choice. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but giving up is a choice. Just because you feel depressed doesn't mean you have to sit and whine and complain and say, that's just the way it is. And I think the church, it's gotten to the point where the church is becoming ineffective because they sit and grope and say, look how poor I feel. I can't get up, woe is me. I don't think that God made us to be like that. I've dealt with this for years now, and this is the conclusion that I've come to. God didn't make us to be like that. No. Just because you struggle doesn't mean that you give up or give in. So let's read in Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9. Now it came about after the, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, my, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun, will be your territory. So just so you guys know where he's talking about, um, the great river, there's two rivers that, that th flow through northern, it's like Syria, I think it is now, the Tigris and the Euphrates, that's what he's talking about. It's basically the southern border of Turkey area. Um, your, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Now he's saying this for the third time. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, it isn't fair what you have to face sometimes, and your enemy doesn't play fair either. Satan doesn't play by rules. He doesn't say, okay, well, here's the rule book of how, how things are going to go, and um, good game, guys. He doesn't do that. He is after your destruction. And yes, he will play dirty. I don't know why this catches us by surprise. We are in a war. Yeah. It, 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 it's all around us every day. People are dying and going to hell. That's called a war. This is something that's serious. We, with depression, you get your eyes all caught up on yourself. You start thinking about your pain, your problem. What about other people? Oh, who cares about them? I've got my problem. Somebody else will go to them, but I got to deal with me. What? Do I need to read what I just read again? So here we have at the beginning of Joshua, Israel's just kind of hanging out. Well, here we are. Moses is dead, so that's a, that's a development, but here we are. We, are, we aren't going to go back to Egypt, but we'll just stay here a little longer. They're just chilling out by the water. Israel, what are you doing, guys? What, what's going on, guys? They're just chilling out there. The leader's dead, and you, you don't see them seeking after God. You don't see them doing anything. You just see them camped out by the river. Well, okay, here we are. We're not going back to Egypt. We'll just stay right here. You see, that's kind of what we do with depression and with life in general in Christianity. I'm not going back to my old sin. I'm just not progressing. God, I'm not falling away. I'm just having myself a pity party that's been going on for months and years and years and years. God, I, I still love you. I just complain all the time. I still love you. I just can't say anything nice about anybody. I just gossip and gossip and gossip. But I still love you. 
Here I am. I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm just staying here. So that takes us to the next point there on the screen there, buddy. Um, so in verse 1 through 2, let's look, uh, we'll go a little bit more side by side on this. Um, and now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying. Okay, so here we have the setup. This is Joshua. Okay, all right. We know what's going on. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am given to them, to the sons of Israel. It was not somebody else's problem. See, what we do when we go through hard times, when we, go, when we get discouraged, we say, maybe it was my fault. Maybe it was just something I did wrong. Or we say, it's all their fault. Get over it. You fight. You take up what God has called you to do, and you move forward. We don't sit at home and, and whine about our situation. We move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit because he has better things for us than just a service on a weekend. He wants to make our lives with purpose. That's different. You can be going through the worst struggles in life, have the hardest life in the world and still have joy. Or you can live miserable. But you can't have both. So here we see in verse two, the idea of moving forward. Don't just exist where you are. And that's unfortunately what I see a lot of Christians who have depression and similar issues, they do. They just exist. Well, I, I can't deal with this because I have a chemical imbalance in my head, so I don't have to deal with it. Where did you get that? Yes, you do have a physical problem with your body, much like somebody who has a broken leg. But does that mean that you don't do anything with your life? Does that mean you just exist? Where in the Bible did God say, I have created you to just sit on your butt all day and exist? God has great things for us if we will only go forward to the land that I have promised you. Yes. Or sit and mope by the Jordan. You can't have both. You can either fight or you can sit down. But you can't do both. So that takes us to the next point on the slide there, buddy. Going through motions and maintaining, it's not conquering. Maintaining is not conquering. I want, I want to make sure you guys understand that. Well, I pray every night the same repeated five-minute prayer. And I go, I go to church on the weekends, and, you know, I have my, my set routine. You know, I, I, I have this, this way that I, I'm just maintaining myself. When's the last time you've had a breakthrough with your depression? When's the last time you've had a breakthrough with anxiety? When is the last time you had a breakthrough? When is the last time that God showed you something that you didn't know while you're reading the Word? When is the last time that you prayed and prayed and prayed and God answered something? When is the last time? God wants us to be doing that on a, on a continual basis. He wants us to fight and to conquer. And with that being said, you have to consciously choose to move forward, especially if you've ever struggled with something like depression. You think, oh, I'm okay because I'm still going, I still have my prayer life, I'm still reading the, reading the word. Most people don't though. Most people give that up and just kind of fill it with other things instead. But still there are the elite few who struggle with depression and say, oh, but I, God, I, I'm still doing these things, sort of. But that's not, that maintenance isn't conquering. I read my Bible for an hour a day, and then I'm good. I make sure I read it for, my, for an hour a day. If you've been stuck in that same cycle for, a long, for, for that long amount of time, you need to get into new territory. Read more. Read something else you don't know. You can't circle the drain. You, you've got to progress. Progress. Do you know what happens when a company doesn't have any increase? <laughs> they fail. <laughs> it's, it, you can't run a company that just maintains. Eventually, you'll get overtaken by another company. That's the exact same thing that happens in our Christian walk. You can't just maintain. 
You have to press forward. You have to do more. Well, God, we're not in Egypt anymore. I want you to do more. Or sit by the Jordan and never realize what God has promised for you. But you can't do both. It's, and when you choose, when you make this decision, it's kind of like breaking free from a fog. One minute you're in it, and then, and then slowly you gradually get out of it, and then you look back and you say, wow, I didn't realize how bad I'd gotten. Verses 3 through 6. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as, I have, just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. You know one of the biggest reasons why Christians lack victory and why Christians lack direction in their life? They try and separate themselves. They don't go to church, or they very rarely go to church. It's just kind of, a, kind of an activity for them. Instead, they have their life. And then in that life, Prayer and Bible study doesn't fit because it's just a religion. It's not a lifestyle. It's something that they do as a general practice. It's just good enough. So there's really no victory. And when they do have victories, it's short-lived. I see this happen very frequently. People get all excited because they get into a new relationship. They get a new haircut. They get a new house. And then after a couple of years, they slip right back. And then they need something else new in their life to distract them from the fact that they're not actually progressing anywhere. I went to court one time and the judge refused to give a guy a bail because he said, no progress. And so he had to go back to jail and they didn't give him bail. But it's that phrase that stuck with me, no progress. Before the judge said that, he made, it. He made his great case about how he had changed, about how he would be different, about how he would have people in his life that would keep him from getting into the same habits. He made a very well-argued case and the judge, after hearing, looks down at his papers and he goes, I'm gonna deny a bill, no progress. What we see here is that we are guaranteeing victory in Christ. We're not guaranteed that there will be no struggle. In fact, God just told Joshua, there is a, I'm calling you into the battle. That's where I'm sending you. And then we get surprised that we're in problems. God has called us to a battle. He has called us to something bigger, something better. He's promised, uh, promised a battle, but he's also promised victory in Christ. Not in earthly pursuits. I'm not saying you're going to get the car that you want, the house that you want, the job that you want. I'm not going to say that everything's going to go well. But I'm going to say that you will experience victory. Yes. Everywhere where, the, where, the, where your foot treads, you'll have victory. And if you never get over what you're going through, you'll still have victory. That's what's promised. Joshua never saw the end to the battle. But he saw victory everywhere that his foot went. You have to have this idea with God. I'm in it for the long haul. This battle that I'm in, I'm in it for the long haul. If you're going through depression, you're in it for the long haul. Buckle down, let's go. Let's go. Well, I struggle with it. I just don't think that I can. You can. I just read it in the Word. You can. Let's go. Stop sitting and groaning and talking about your problems. Get up and fight. Because God has called you to fight, not exist. He didn't tell you to go live by the Jordan. He called you to go conquer. That is what he, what he promised. So verse seven, verses 7 through 8, Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Be careful to do so. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. Don't go your own way, go my way. Be very careful to do that. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. How many verses, this is not to condemn you, this is for your own personal tally. How many verses have you memorized in the past month? 
How many verses have you kept on your mind throughout the past month? Read that again. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But if we don't even know what the book of the law is, how can it not depart from our mouths? How can we have victory if we don't know who is giving us the victory? How do we know if we, how do we measure success if we don't have a God who's told us what our purpose is? What would you consider a successful life? When you go to your grave, what would make it a success? And what do you base that on? On the word or on your own idea? I know some people who would call a success having a, a good retirement plan going. So they work their whole life for a retirement plan and then they die. Would you call that a success? I'm not criticizing that, I'm asking. Would, is that what you call a success? What makes your life a success? This is something that, that, that sh we should be thinking about. Because if God calls us to fight and we fight, that's a success. That is a success. If we don't accomplish everything that we want, but we still do what God tells us to, that's a success. So this kind of brings us to the idea, so I just have to pull myself up by my bootstraps and power through, right? No. You cannot stand firm without Christ. You stand firm in Christ and what he called you to do. That's what gives you your firmness. You don't pick yourself up by your bootstraps. You don't try to do better. You seek after God and you get the victory in Christ's name. But that's how you get the victory. Well, I just have all these all these thoughts. You can go to the next slide there, but uh, next uh, point there, buddy. Well, I just have all these thoughts that, that are just destroying me. They're crushing me. They're, they're too heavy. Let the truth of Christ strengthen you. Don't let your thoughts run wild. Well, I can't control my thoughts. Yes, you can. What you mean to say is I'm not disciplined in controlling my thoughts. That's okay. But be real with yourself. This is something I need to work on. And then work on it. Don't just know your problem and accept it as a problem. Know your problem and then face your problem. What good would it have done if David would have said, Oh, look, there's a giant out there that we need to fight. See you guys. You have to see Goliath, and then you have to fight Goliath. You don't acknowledge the problem and then run from it. Oh, I have depression, so I just take pills. Well, that's fine. I'm not saying you can't take pills for stuff. I'm not, not even commenting on that at all. It's, that's between you and God. What I am saying is, are you fighting it? Are you moving forward? Are you having success? Are you having victory? Because that is what God has called us to. So go to the next point there, buddy. Depression is definitely hard, as are a lot of things in life, but giving up is a mindset and a choice. Once you have a taste of sitting on your butt and doing nothing, it's very hard to get out of it. This is one of the hard things about welfare programs, not that they're not needed, and I'm not criticizing them at all, but sometimes when we have the idea of somebody else providing for us, we just kind of accept that and back off. We stop trying. You don't believe me? Look at all the middle-aged men who have families that sit at home, not working, playing video games all day. You can't tell me that's responsibility. I was talking to one, he said, oh, I can't work because I have seizures. Okay, all right, that's, that's a legitimate, legitimate health problem. But he walks all around town. He's, he's never at his house resting, he's never at the hospital, he's always walking around town. So are you sure you can't work? Now, I'm not saying this to tear anybody down. I'm saying this so that you can think about yourself. I don't want you to go out here, out of here thinking about how you can tear down other people and how you're better than somebody else. I want you to walk out of here saying, how can I grow? Amen. How can I have victory in my life? Yes. And that's what I'm really getting at. Um, you can't let your thoughts run wild. Well, this situation is irritating me. Okay, God brings good out of it. I can't do this wrong. You can do this. God has called you to do good works. That's what he's called you to do. Ephesians actually says that I have called you to do good works in Christ Jesus. So I think you can do this. I'm a failure. False. No one is a failure who obeys God. No one is a failure who obeys God. It didn't go your way, maybe. Maybe you made mistakes. Okay. 
but did you obey God? Then you're not a failure. Fact. Take that to the bank and cash it, because that, that is true. You know, one of the, one of the real turning points for me was that God told me something very, very enlightening. See, I was trying to get over my anxiety and depression so that I could go, you know, focus on something else. And this is what God showed me. He said, you will go to the grave without having victory. And then he said, I have given this to you. Because you wouldn't have learned it otherwise. Do not try to look for the day when this will not be afflicted on you because you will go to the grave with depression and anxiety. And then he said this, but there's your hope. When you get to heaven, you won't. You won't have anything. And it was at that moment that I decided, okay, God, okay, I'm going to fight. Because that was a battle that God called me to. See, we have ways of getting puffed up in ourselves. And God has ways of helping us to depend on him instead. So the things that we see is things that, but God, that's not fair based on what? See, we have this, most of us live with this false expectation that life is going to be perfect. And anytime that it's anything less than that perfection, we tell God that it's not fair. Chuck's in a wheelchair. I have anxiety and depression. See what I mean? What do you base this idea of fairness on? You can't choose your life. You choose what to do with your life. And there's a real difference there. Just because you have a struggle doesn't mean you have an excuse. You fight. You fight. When God said, take up your sword and fight, he didn't say, unless you have depression. He said, take up your sword and fight. My parents had this idea, which I actually have never heard it from anyone else except from them. They always told me this. Divorce, we, all, we, we accepted the fact that divorce for us was not an option. So we never even mentioned it. We never brought it up because we decided it wasn't an option. I want you to think about that. Wow. Okay, now, and let me kind of throw a little bit of another idea on that. You can be married, okay. Or you can be married with joy. It's easy, in a way, to stay married. In a way. You keep your mouth shut and you just kind of walk away when you're really irritated. But it's harder to live, to stay married, and enjoy it. See, a lot of us, we're kind of in that place with our Christian walk. I'm a Christian. I'm not enjoying it. I'm not having victory. I'm not moving forward, but I'm a Christian. Much like, I'm staying married. I hate my wife, but I'm staying married. To what profit? To what profit? If you aren't experiencing victory in your life, to what profit? See, we should be living in a place where God is able to show us more. And I'm getting too long, so let's, let's kind of move ahead. That takes me to the next point on the slide. You have to come to the realization that quitting isn't an option. And when I say quitting, I'm not just talking about leaving the faith. I'm also talking about living without joy. Living, just accepting your problem, and I'm just, I'm just going to live with it. You have to... You have to Choose that that's not an option. You have to consciously make the decision to fight. And here's the thing. Don't waste your energy. How do, I, how do you waste your energy? By giving up. When you give up, it takes energy to give up. And then you teach yourself to give up. In fact, go to the next point there, buddy. Oh, previous one. I guess it was on that slide, maybe. No matter what my situation, quitting, complaining, being negative, it's not an option. Okay, yeah, go to the next slide. I guess it is on the next one. I had it somewhere. Next one. Did you know that scientists have discovered that when you complain, it actually teaches your brain to look for the negative? It rewires your brain when you complain. Did you know that? That is crazy wild, isn't it? Did you know that it takes a, a long time to retrain the patterns of your brain? What am I saying? I'm saying that you teach yourself by looking at the bad and then you literally can't get out of it. 
because you have to retrain your mind. You have to do something that you've never done before. That you've never done before. There's people who struggle with depression that they still get up whenever they want. Set an alarm clock and get up at that time. Do it. Get up, take a shower, be up. Even if you don't have a job, get up, take a shower, be up. Retrain your mind. Retrain yourself. If you can train yourself to give up, you can train yourself to fight. With time. So don't waste your energy giving up. Gossip, bad thoughts, complaining, go to the, um, no, don't go to the next slide. We all have limited energy. And especially people who struggle with depression, those kinds of things, they have even a lower energy output. Do you want to waste your energy with that kind of crap? Waste your energy gossiping and complaining and just negativeness? Is that what you want to waste your energy on? Or do you want to spend your energy on building others up? Do you want to spend your energy on contributing to the kingdom of God? Or do you want to do the rat race where you go into work every day for no reason? You accumulate wealth for no reason. And then you die for no reason. Having a job is not a problem. People should have a job. We should all have work. That's something that I think is a biblical mandate. However... Work for a purpose. Use your wealth for a purpose. You're only here for a short time. Use it strategically for the kingdom of God. Or always have off days and wonder, why do I feel like I don't have a purpose? How, how do I find what God's will is for my life? How do I? And go through that same cycle over and over again. Your choice. You can stay by the Jordan or you can conquer. Whatever you want to do. So, a few things in closing. First off, control your thoughts. That's really, really one of the top things there. Do what's right no matter what you feel. Well, I don't feel like doing that. Do it anyways. Learn to not quit in life. Finish projects. Did, did you start, start exercising? Keep exercising. Why? Because God told you to exercise? No. For the mindset of not quitting. Diet. Go on a diet. Stick to something. You have a job, don't quit. If your boss fires you, go back and ask him to give it back. Don't quit. It's a mindset that you get into. And inevitably, our spiritual life intersects with our physical life. How we act in the world is how we act with God, and how we act with God is how we act in the world. Don't give up. Train yourself to not give up. Um, are you going through these slides? Go to the next point there, buddy. On the next slide, I, I, I just kind of assume that you know what I'm thinking, so know what I'm thinking, okay? Um, so learn to not quit in life, and learn to enjoy life, and then learn to enjoy God. How do you enjoy life? How do you enjoy God? First off, worship. Worship isn't something that you do when you feel like worshiping. It's kind of a paradox. To truly worship, you think that you have to be happy so you can worship it. But the opposite is usually true. Usually if you don't feel like worshiping, that's the only time you really can worship. It's a whole thing. I don't want to take the surprise away from you. Do it for yourself, and it'll just, it blows your mind. Trust me on this. It really does. Um, how else? Prayer. Prayer is one of the big ways you can actually learn to enjoy life. How does prayer teach you to learn life? Because, because your mind, you, you, you think different. I, I don't want to take the joy out of that one either. When you realize that you're changing, it blows your mind. You're like, whoa, that was cool. It changes how you think. It changes how you deal with life. It changes what you desire out of life. It just changes you. And I'm not talking about five minutes. I'm not talking about... Uh, cry out to God and encounter God. You know that you're doing it right when it happens. <laughs> I mean, that's all there is to it. If you've never experienced that kind of a prayer, you're missing out. You're missing out. Um... And here's, here's another practice that you should probably get into. List good things. List good things and blessings that are happening in your life. Things that have happened in the past so that you don't forget. Remind yourself about the good things that God has brought because this is what the Bible says. Every good thing is from the Father of lights. So take time to slow down. You know, I, I know one thing that, one thing that I do is, is that if you free up your, if you fill your free time with more business and work, even if you enjoy the thing, it's just draining you more. Let me give you an example. Let's say I like working on my yard because I, I do like working on my yard. Now, let's say I've been working and working and working. So instead of sitting down for five seconds and just praying, 
I decided to go outside and work on my yard because I enjoy it anyways. You see what I'm saying? Take time to slow down. So the last thing I want to say, go to the go to the last slide there, buddy. The one with the pictures. Now I went down. Uh, can you turn off these lights here, uh, Joe Lewis? Would you mind? Or Joe, that's fine. I, I forgot there's two Joes there. <laughs> Uh, this is this is over by the high school. Now these pictures were taken on the exact same road. This is facing the high school. Look at all the dirt and ugly, just terrible. The next point picture. This is turning immediately around. This is exactly the opposite side of the road. Now go to the next slide. Here it is again from another ankle. Go to the next slide, and there it is. That's exactly how it is with depression. Yeah. You're in your life is kind of like a road. What do you want to focus on? The ugly or the good. They're both there. I think that these pictures are just fantastic to show what I'm talking about. Yeah, yes. They're both there. Yeah. You can go ahead and turn the light on. They're both there. You have to choose what to look at. Well, all that's happening to me is bad things because you're looking at dirt. So let's, let's close off with this, verse nine. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not tremble. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. If I could have Chuck closes in prayer, and then Joe, if you could pray for the food, please.